channeling the spell. This is going to be a fire raga. It doesn't kill somehow, and it kills Nyad to land a kill. You oh my god! Here, apparently not, because she is going for the back line. This is instant casting, but it is. What's up, everybody? My name is Kason. Welcome back to the WDL. This is season four, week five of our Champions League. The best of the best. It should be a great video, and I'm excited to hop into it. Just so you guys know, we should normally have 12 battles in this video as it was a double header week. However, Jesus LBL is on vacation and enjoying his vacation very much with his wife. And uh, I didn't want him to feel like he had to submit his fights this week, um, obviously, while he was out there with her. Fortunately for us, uh, him and Coppola did have a battle and ended up getting it submitted before he left for vacation, but his fight against Machen X will not be happening in this video. We will be putting it in the next video. So just keep that in mind. Instead of 12 battles, we will have 11. So the standings at the end of this video will be just slightly off because two teams will have played one less game than everybody else. That being said, these are how the standings shake out heading into week six. We have Maverick, coach of Symphony of the Knights, kind of dominating everybody. He's 5-0 right now. He has a two-game lead in first place at the moment. And then we have a ton of teams at 3-2. and two. Machen X with House Shootpuff, Turamar of the Fire Ferrets, Jesus LBL of Straw Hats, Sand Rooster with Unicorn Gunfight 2, and the Crane of Scarlet Moon Empire all sitting at 3-2. and two. If the season ended right now, those would be your six playoff teams, but obviously we're not even halfway through in terms of total battles. We will be at the end of the video. Ready Player Will, Coppola, Numero, and Surf Taco with Fight Club, Sword and Sorcery Mercenaries, Blind Enthusiasts, and Britney Spears, all two and three at the moment. So only one game out of the playoffs right now as it stands. Surf, or sorry, JB79 of the Paranoid Androids and Ram9 of the Rock Boys currently sitting at one and four, looking to try and pick up some wins this week to try and keep pace to try and make the playoffs. Who is going to win this week? We'll have to find out, so stay tuned. All right, ladies and gentlemen, season four, week five, Champions League about to kick off here. We've got the Fire Ferrets on the right side, Fight Club on the other side, and who's going to get the better end of this one? Double Light Comp plus Valade here for the Fire Ferrets, Double Earth plus Little Leela here for Fight Club. Yorel's going to get that Courage Removal online, Spell Shielding online for Renoa, going to give her a giant massive physical health shield, which will be quite useful against Stern Wing of Destiny. His only barrier break in the kit is a single target attack. The Protect on the entire team is going to be useful against their Urel, though, as I don't think she has any sort of Protect to spell. And this initial turn rotation by both teams looking very, very clean here. The Black Robe to which Helena team are being used by Sakura. Reawakening here is for Stern. So he's got Re-Raise. Urel's going to pop her own Courage. So, very similar turn rotations. I think uh, both teams using Elemental Resist, both teams using Barriers, both teams using uh, some sort of Don't Die mechanic. We'll have to see how it goes. Time Accelerant comes out from the Renoa. Going to land onto the tank, Little Leela. I think it's very important to haste Little Leela. She's a fantastic unit, but she's not very fast. She is going to move across the map. Save herself a little bit of CT by not acting here. Convergence only going to do about 2k. Will drop the healing power, which could matter if Renoa starts healing her. The fast cast coming out from Blade, so we've got three hasted up units on the battlefield. Iron Body stands here for your rel, so running that Pugilist sub job which is a good sub job to run for Yorel. Obviously, sometimes she can get off a Demon Purger and heal herself late in the fight. Rebel Intention coming out, removing the Courage though. Silence lands on Sakura. That is massive. Little Leela just crippling the Sakura. She's going to do very, very little for the rest of this fight. And Sternwing of Destiny is going to have to hard carry. Sakura did do her job though by removing the Courage from Yorel, which means he, she drops to the damage from Stern. So even with a silenced Sakura, this fight is not over for Turnbar. She's going to walk up, beat Leela with her stick. As Valade is going to walk in, go for the Ice Vitalization. So it looks like Sakura's not low enough to proc a heal. Just going to go with the other support ability. Double Recover will top Leela up. And the Aegis Crush doing about 5,900. Renoa's going to have to do a lot of damage though for Ready Player Will to have a chance. The Silence does refresh though, so Sakura is going to continue to be basically useless in this fight. Renoa, I think, should just go for another heal here. And will Turnbar's team be able to just bleed them out as Aegis Crush does about 4,400? Stern will eventually run out of AP though. Valade going to go for a heal here. It's going to be a Cura. And Stern is out of AP right here. He has two, so he goes for the standard attack. 
Standard attack again from the Sakura, who is just crippled. Silence spell hits all three, does not silence the Valade though, which is pretty huge for Turn Bar. Renoa should be able to go for damage. I think Leela's high enough that doesn't proc a heal. Twin Strike is a good chunk, but Valade I think is just going to be able to heal this back. And it's kind of a war of attrition right now that Turambar is slowly winning, but the healing power down from Leela is massive, as that Cura from Relade is doing very little. He's an excellent support, but he's not the best healer in the world. Renoa is going to go for, I think, another heal, but this Leela is putting in the work. I mean, she's had so many opportunities to go for this silencing spell. This fight is going to be close, even in this 2v3. This Sakura just being crippled here. Seven actions left, you guys. We have to look at the turn order because I think this fight goes to turns. Valade going to go for another heal, but that Cura is so little. Thunderbite coming out. So the Esper, does it land any sort of status effects? I don't think it has a chance to. The map effect is here to increase damage, but Renault is going to go for another twin strike. It is going to take out the Sakura. Stern is barely hanging on and actually dies to a standard attack from Leela. He will pop back up from the re-raise, but unless he does a ton of damage here, I think the fight is now in ready player Will's favor. He does have 31 AP. Aegis Crush is going to do 4,300. The healing power down, I think it's removed on re-raise, so Valade might be able to get a big heal. It's not a big heal, and it might not have gotten removed because 1,000 uh, is not very much. And based on health, it looks like Ready Player Will is going to get the narrow victory over Turambar. So Fight Club over the Fire Ferrets in battle number one. An incredibly tight fight, and we've got 10 more for you guys today. Next up, we have Unicorn Gunfight 2, Electric Boogaloo versus Symphony of the Knights. These are two powerhouses. Symphony of the Knights currently undefeated at 5-0 versus probably the hottest team in the league with the full mace comp. Sand Rooster has ripped off three straight wins with this team. Can he finally take down the Juggernaut Maverick here? As it looks like multiple AoE buffs coming out from this mace comp. Calamity Stronghold gives a barrier to everybody. Nullify status affects this other limit break coming out from Hildira as well. I think nullifies even more, gets the CT up, and uh, I think it drops Man Eater on attacks, which it can actually make the team even more tanky than it normally would be. I think that's part of the secret sauce here, as Maverick is running a comp we have not seen him run before, so this is what he's trying to use to beat this full Magic team. He is bringing Celis, he is bringing the Chunak, and he's also bringing the Cyrell, so very interesting as the Wind Veritas TMR gets popped by Mashiri. Some different resistances being used, utilized by Aldira. I don't think that will matter a ton here. As the full moon style, this is the Halloween Little Leela TMR to try and really get that magic way up. Notice that it is an accuracy TMR as well, which will be useful here against the Chunak. Obviously, knowing Maverick has uh, multiple evasion units on his team, Sand Rooster is prepared for this. As undefeated General's Pride coming up from the Celis, unit attack resist up. She's going to move forward. Also gives her a nice little heal back when she hits. And the fight should kick off shortly here. Spirit Ward coming out from the Cyrell. Attack and Spirit. Summer Catone is in range to deal damage. It does hit that one hit barrier and debuffs her in a number of ways. As Mashiri is just going to stand still. She doesn't do a whole lot here. Chunek cannot find the range and is out of buffs at the moment. And we're going to have a few awkward turns here as the teams finally collide into each other. But here's the elegant spinning edge. So this is interesting. This tells me that Maverick probably took off her AoE attack resist uh, attack. I don't know if he forgot to turn off the limit break if he was trying to just only do non-range spells. Because it's interesting that she opted for the limit break instead of that, but interesting um, to see the limit break coming up for Summer Catone here. Dropping the Man Eater and getting the sleep onto Celis could be pretty huge. She should still be able to do her job as the Hallowed Race soaks it up. The one awkward thing, though, is that anything she soaks up in terms of attack, she won't actually wake up as the Triple Reeve comes in and does a good chunk of damage. So Chunak putting in the work, but Ildira is ready to heal these two units all the way back up to full. And unless you have healing power down, it is really hard to take down this mace team. The attack comes out from Catone. Cyrell does live it, and it wakes up Celis. Chunak actually dodges, though, so even with the Halloween little Leela TMR, it looks like the accuracy is somewhat of an issue. Chunak coming in with the Blade of the Fatal Waltz, though. This limit break should deal a good amount of damage. Oh, 
Oh my goodness. 8,700 across those three damages in a chain. Hallowed Ray is going to hit the Celis, and Maverick is looking to be in good position versus this Mace team. What can Celis do? Cleansing Blade is going to remove any debuff she has. Also tops herself up nicely, but Ildira is in attack mode here. She takes out the Cyrell, making it a 2v2, so don't count this Maze team out yet. Chunak is basically out of AP. Razor's Edge does very little here, and that Calamity uh, Stronghold one-hit barrier is still keeping Ildira alive. This is the limit break from Mashiri. We never see this, but it is damn cool, and she is going to be so damn tanky now. That is why they're going for this Ildira, as her attack resistances are through the roof at the moment. Level 4 Water Gun, though. Ildira, not the most accurate unit that we have seen. Cannot hit this Chunak. 13 actions left. Could we get a situation where it goes to turns here? As Hallowed Ray is going to hit the Celis. There's always healing on Sandrister's side, so it is potentially a War of Attrition, as Celis doesn't typically do a ton of damage. 1600 from the Cleansing Blade. Ildira is going to go for the Kyrga and top herself off along with Mashri. And Chunak with only 15 AP. I just don't think he has enough to get through this Ildira. She procs the counter, but it misses. Hallowed Ray does hit. This is a guaranteed hit, though, and the guaranteed hit nullification is now faded away for the Chunak. Cell is coming with the Magic Burst. It is not turned off, so I am shocked that she went for the Limit Break earlier instead of that attack. I'm surprised it did more damage, but level 4 Waterga for 860. This fight is going to end, and it looks like Sand Rooster is going to be the first player to take down Maverick in the Champions League in Season 4. Very well done here. This full Mace comp is just ridiculously scary. I think I said it last week Week, is that even though Sand Rooster uh, was not like in first place or anything, that this team specifically I thought scared me more than anything in the league. Man, this was a hell of a fight, well played by both players, but a huge congrats to Sand Rooster for keeping that momentum going. Next fight we've got here is Coppola's Sword and Sorcery Mercenaries versus Jesus LBL's Straw Hats. And the Rose Sanctuary of Undying comes out from the Black Rose Helena. This is the hyper carry of Jesus' team. Can she put in the work alongside Mish and Uni to get through Katia, Engelbert, and Squall team? So, double knights alongside the mace do have some sort of VC uh, synergy there. As it looks like Katia is going to start channeling, I imagine it's a Calamity Guard but she does have multiple buffs that she can use. Misha's starting to channel a spell here. Is he in range to deal damage as the arrow fall comes in? Drops any sort of CT uh, shenanigans that Coppola would be able to pull off. Toad comes out, though. Does it land? I don't think it did. I'm pretty sure I did not see that land. It is not actually damage that Misha was going for. I thought that range was pretty... Oh my god, it did land! Oh no! Engelbert is now a Toad, and this is really, really rough for Coppola, as this tank is going to do very little compared to what he would normally do. Katia, what the hell do you have in store here? She's going to start channeling another spell. Erase Bright Ward. Erases debuffs, but to Toad is not a debuff, unfortunately, as Mish is going to try and capitalize on this frog. Flare is going to come out, and that is some cooked frog legs, if I've seen some. 6,400 damage is pretty darn good. Uni going to capitalize now as well. Probably go for another air arrow fall, I would imagine. It's going to be on both units. And that's not a lot of damage, but it does get through any sort of Calamity Guard that would have been on there before. As Katia is going to start probably going for a heal onto this frog. Knight's Blessing procs a three-hit barrier, so that's actually even better than a heal. The problem is that now Katia is in range to get demolished by this Helena. And Rose Fulmination comes through. The barrier will help mitigate damage a little bit, but will it be enough? 5,400 damage, removing Re-Raise Sealed as well, and this is going to be tough to overcome. Looking at the turn order here, Froggelbert will come up 443 damage onto the Mish, but Squall is still not in range to deal damage. This Aurora of Blessings is coming in really late here after all the damage uh, has essentially come through already. I expect either a Fyraga or a Flare from Mish. Which is he going to opt for? He's going to go for the single target Flare. 7500 damage onto this Toad. And I think Helen is going to be able to clean this up. She should be able to take out the Toad, should be able to take out Katia. Rose Blast is going to land a double kill. And now it is Squall versus the world. And this is not Final Fantasy VIII where he is the hero. Punishing Slow Arrow is going to do a little bit of chip. Can he pull this off? Winding Blade does good chunks to the Mish, but honestly, Helena tanks that damage quite well here. 
as Mish is kind of popping off. I would say is probably a, a good chunk of the carry in this fight. We've seen this before from him as he's just put in work in multiple matches. Getting the Toad to start this fight was just massive. As Tri Denervation comes out, so two, three, uh, three hitting magic attacks. Uni tries to clean it up but can't quite get it. Could Squall somehow manage to live through this Misha's turn? Not a chance as he doesn't go for any casting time. He goes for the Dark Ramu Esper, removes the Protect, removes his life, and that is a victory for Jesus LBL and the Straw Hats. Next up, we've got the Paranoid Androids versus House Shupa growing strong. And it looks like we've got Astrius, Howl at the Heaven's Blade, and Tyrell here alongside for Machin X's team. Double, or not double rather, but the Dark Shiva, Dark Odin type of composition. You love to see it. Tyrell in good position. I thought was probably going to go for a Keen Blade, but actually goes for Heart of Flutter to try and get across the map quickly. JB79 here with his uh, patented Elda, King of the Lions. Agrius and Curry Wazette team, as it looks like AP cost rate down being used by uh, the Agrius on both her and the Elda. I'm not quite sure wh whose TMR that was, which one he just used, but I love this tech from uh, JB79 to try and counteract any sort of Wind Veritas TMR that would come out. However, we have not actually seen it come out from Majin yet. This is... Um, I think it's important sometimes where in terms of uh, Astrius, he now gets his Courage online. If he were to use that TMR, he might not actually be able to get that off. Calamity Guard coming out from the Howlet though is very interesting as Lion's Drain does a ton of damage to this Tyrell. Good thing he had that bear, or no, actually he breaks barrier, so it doesn't matter. North Wayne Strike is going to take him out and Tyrell unfortunately did not get much of anything done in this fight. Curry gets the Frostmaw Barrage off and it lands a Frostbite on both units. And this is looking very, very promising for JB79 who came into this fight with only one win. But if there's anybody in the league I would not bet against, it would be this man right here, JB79, as Howlett's going to go for a Calamity Guard, going to nullify status effects. And one thing I will shout out, this nullifies Frostbite. So you can see what the plan was for Machen. He was trying to do this early on in the fight, but it only caught on the Tyrell. So it didn't nullify Frostbite before it lands. And nullification doesn't cleanse. It just prevents future ones. But that is a ton of damage and a huge heal back for Astrius. So as much as this looked good for JB, this is not over by any means. Howlet is going to walk in with the limit break. Magia Arte, is it enough to take out the Agrius? Not quite. 3,700 damage is a good chunk. She catches a CT up though. And can she land any sort of status effects? No, she's actually going to go for the hate. She's going to go for the taunting blade. And Elda, King of the Lions, is up to bat. They're stacked up for a nice little AoE. And he's not going to go for the Lion's Drain. He's going to go for the Limit Break. This is going to drop the Pierce Resistance. It basically shatters the entire universe here. Then Fall We Shall comes out. And I thought this was going to be an AoE. It actually only lands on the Astrius because of the positioning, interestingly enough. Prox the Courage. And right now, he is basically out of AP, so he's just going to buff instead of attack because of the positioning with the dead Tyrell in the center. It feels like they're like getting together as a group of friends playing some weird game and there's some dead guy in the middle. Anyway, Eldis going in with the Spirit Throw of Undoing, removing the Courage. Astrius is now down. This is down to a 1v1. Elda has 18 AP, gonna go for the Cleansing Spear, 3500 damage. Howl at the Heaven's Blade only has 14 AP, so both units are very, very low, but he does have Lifesteal in his kit, which can be useful. Because he didn't have to move, Howl going to lap. He's going to get the standard attack off, heal himself up just a little bit, but he only accrued 8 AP, which is just brutal, because that means he probably has to standard attack one more time before getting another ability off, and this fight just became really, really hype all of a sudden. As Cleansing Spear does about 5k, Howl is going to standard attack. Can he lap again? I don't think so. He already did it once, as Elda is going to finish this off with a Bubbly Bamboozler. That is the Ultros Esper. And cleaning up the victory here is JB79 and the Paranoid Androids. What an amazing fight. I will say, if Machen was able to get that Calamity Guard off sooner and not end up with the Frostbite, I think he could have won this fight. But the way the positioning and the turn order all kind of worked out, he caught the Frostbite from Curry before he was able to get that on his two main carries. That being said, absolutely excellent fight. I also love the TMR usage by JB79 here to give AP to Elda. One of those things expecting Winveritus TMR to try and deplete AP, stuff like that. 
I don't even think Machen ender ever ended up using it, but I still love the tech to try and counteract that. So very, very well played by both players and a huge congratulations to JB. Two more fights remaining on the Heinler Castle Gate. We've got the Blind Enthusiast versus the Scarlet Moon Empire. And it looks like Elda, Leonis, Winter Luartha, and Shells on one side versus the Glacella Flagbearer, Resnick, and Vadim composition. We saw Numero put in work with this team against Ready Player Will's side. Can he put in the work against McCrane's team, who's been very, very scary all season? This Elda, Leonis, the OG Elda. I think fully reincarnated here with 14,000 HP, gets his limit break online, and this limit break is bananas. It's a barrier, it's courage, it's unit attack resist, it's hate, it's everything you could possibly want in a tank, or at least from a uh, pretty much day one tank, rather, as Puppet Master coming out from the shells is going to give courage to the Winter Luartha and to herself, so everybody on McCrane's side now has courage. The one thing that Numero has going for him is the big AoE attack that Glaciella likes to spam has Courage Removal in it, so I'm not sure how much that Courage remove Courage is actually going to matter. The King Bradley team are being used by Luartha. She's going to start moving forward. Shell should be going for the Rite of Safe Passage. There it is, the AoE resist, critical evasion, all that good stuff. AP recovery and crit, I mean, this buff is just insane. Resnick is going to start channeling. I think this is the unit attack resist spell, but she has a couple that she could be going for here as the King Bradley TMR being mirrored by both Wind Pierce units on both sides here. Elda's gonna walk forward, he is out of buffs at the moment. It is the teachings of the Strong Bolt. This is the unit attack resist. Extra benefits if you are a Lightning unit, and the Deem is that. As it looks like Soldier Sub is here for the Luartha. So I'm not entirely sure what all skills she gets on her Soldier, soldier Sub, whether she has Protect Removal, um, but I'm cu curious to see here. As Glacial is going to walk in, she's out of buff. She's used multiple already. She's ready to start this fight. And this map with the spacing is just ever so slightly awkward, where sometimes this does happen where units just kind of skip one extra buff and just move forward without doing anything. And we've seen that three times in this fight already. Resnick with a lot of movement, though, goes in with the invitation of, to darkness, gets hate down here. Witcher Luartha is ready to hit an AoE, though Hazard Break is there. So that is that AoE attack that I was thinking of. Does cost herself a little bit of HP as Shining Conviction comes through. So this is not the Courage uh, Removal attack. This is not the Triple Cross, but it does deal good damage to the Luartha. But Piercing Vengeance, good lord. Glaciella might have a ton of AoE resist, but apparently she doesn't have all the unit resist as Elda just demolishes. Hazard Break comes through, going to remove these two units. And this is all she wrote for Numero 80. Shells is off in no man's land. As Ram9 would say, off in the trees somewhere, as Resnick is going to start channeling the spell. Expect a Dream Inducer. Some damage, lands asleep, but only onto Lawartha. And this Elda is a scary mofo here, as he is full health. He doesn't even need Shells to come in and heal himself. He can just do it himself. He just lifestealed 6,900 health, a very nice amount. He was already full, so it didn't really matter. And Resnick is just going to make this fight a little awkward, as she has done before multiple times. She's going to heal herself up the full, but a, a fully asleep Winter Luartha is just going to sit still and not do a whole lot of anything. But Resnick should be in attack mode again here, as her HP bar is full. Height 3 Holy Knight's Purge does take out the Luartha or would if her courage was gone. Going to immobilize both of these units, but Elda's going to bring the pain with another piercing vengeance, and it just keeps himself really topped up. Shells should be able to reach a heal this time. Beachside Rejuvenation. I love this tech that McCrane brings. This is the Summer LC TMR. It is an instant cast, AoE ranged heal, and I love that TMR usage by McCrane. Binding Javelin will finally take out the Resnick, and that is a very convincing victory for McCrane in the Scarlet Moon Empire, who has looked very impressive all season. The GG to both players. The last fight on this map, we're saving the best for last. And it looks like the nameplate is Get Champion for Surf Taco on the left side, coach of Britney Spears. A nice little hint as he is the season one and season three grand champion. On the other side, we've got Ram9, the season two champion. So the only two players to have taken the grand victory of a season are facing off against each other. The Lightful Demon coming out from Ram9's Halloween Ryryu, getting magic and movement up 
and Gilgamesh is channeling a spell. So I could be wrong. I think this is a quicken onto this Halloween Raiyu. This is the try and pop off moment for Ram 9 as he has a massively sick like flex team here going up against Surf Taco with Orin, Halloween Raiyu, and Gilgamesh. Here is the quicken. How much damage can Halloween Raiyu get down? It has to be a lot here to have a payoff, I think. He's going to go for the limit break. This is onto the Summer Elsie of Britney Spears. The Creeping Terror comes out. I think this has a chance to poison and should deal good damage. 9200 lands the poison as well. She is going to die on her next turn unless she can heal up, which unfortunately for Ram 9, her limit break does exactly that. She's sitting with 616 health, but she doesn't go for the limit break. You gotta be kidding me. She starts channeling a spell, which means she's just going to drop. But Rach has says, not so damn fast. I'm gonna damage cap your ass. It is now a 2v2. And this is so awkward because this is a channeled spell for Gilgamesh. I think this is a quicken on the now dead Raiyu. He might be a zombie, but he's not coming back to life here. As Umber, Bo Umber Bombardment, 4200 with another 2k from the Rupture. And it is a quicken from the Gilgamesh. That is, oh man, that is so disappointing for Ram 9. But Gilgamesh is ready to go in attack mode this time. He's going to go for the limit break. He's going to go up in the air, summon this huge laser ball of light, whatever. I don't know what the hell it is, but it's so freaking sick. 5,800 damage and lands the slow. Does this turn, change the turn order? It does slightly. Rukia actually goes before Rage has Orin coming with the paralyzing edge, lands the kill. Rage has is down and Ram 9 is on the precipice of trying to win this victory, but Spread Blast takes out the Gilgamesh, and this is another Rupture coming in hot for 2k. That is really good damage. And looking at the turn order, this Rugi is about to pop off. He didn't have to move, which means he's going to lap, and this poor Oron is going to die. And Surf Taco, your Season 1 and 3 Grand Champion, will take out Ram 9, the Season 2 Grand Champion. Man, absolutely excellent fight. I, I'm so appreciative of the spice that Ram 9 was bringing out in this fight. The Quicken Halloween Ryryu team, not something you always expect to see, but it was really damn cool. And the Rulgia on the side of Surf Taco, my goodness. We've seen this unit kind of pop off in a couple of places, uh, both for Surf Taco and for Odaiba. I think this unit is probably undercosted by at least 10, but he is a beast. This is a hell of a fight, and we've got another map to head into, guys. So let's check out the other fights. Heading over to the Rundall Castle Gate, we've got two teams looking to try and bounce back from a loss on the Heindler Gate. It looks like the Blind Enthusiast, coached by Numero 80, running double greatsword plus Resnick. Shutzel, absolutely love it. One of my favorite units in the entire game. On the other side, we've got a greatsword unit as well in Winter Ravis alongside Valade and Renan. And Renan, I think, is the big factor here, as Rain is a really great tank, has great AoE resistance. Shutzel can off often get some AoE resistance in this comp, but Renan has a double single target attack here. Can he manage to get that off during this fight? That is my question. Heart of Flutter being used by the Rain. This movement is actually, I think, really good for Numero 80. If the, he can draw the units over to the left side while Resnick and Shutzel move alongside and kind of flank, this could end up being pretty good for him here. As of late, I think should move, get his Bar Blizzard buff off. There it is. So he's got his massive two buffs off already. Winter Rabby's going to go with the momentum. So King Bradley TMR being opted for on turn two. And what is Renan going to go for? It's going to be Fight Like a Pirate. So double hasted up units. Double haste TMRs. Very, very effective. I don't think there's any haste removal on the side of Numero here. As Revitalize being used by Shutzelt. Interestingly enough, I don't always see the bells being used as it is somewhat risky sometimes with the Wind Veritas TMR being out all, all the time. But the nice little slash chain being started by Rain, but that is the Ball Lightning Plus I was talking about. That double single target is enough to just murder the Shutzelt. He does catch a physical barrier here with the Law of Refuge. Ravi should be able to reach the Rain, but can't reach Shutzelt as well. Holy Knight hijinks. Will the Frostbite land, and how much damage is this going to do? It should not be very much. It's only 1,600. Like I said, very good AoE resist on rain. As Valade, I'm not sure what he's going to go for. These two units are not low enough to be healed. He's just going to refresh his buff. He absolutely loves doing this. Can shuts out land a pressure hazard? Yes, he can. Does the stop land? No. The stop nullify is there for turn bar, which is massive. Ball Lightning Plus is just going to crush shuts out again. A unit with naturally low magic attack resist never stood a chance, unfortunately, as Brute Force is going to do 1800. They're going to slowly try and whittle through this rain. 
How much damage can Rain do to this Winter Ravis, though? Does have the Elemental dis? Oh my god! Elemental Advantage was what I meant to say. Over 10k, that attack does break fire resistance as well. So just absolutely murders the Ravis. I did not expect that kind of damage as the Wind Veritas TMR finally comes out a little bit late here. The Cura is going to land for Valade onto the Renan. But Resnick is off in no man's land. I said this positioning was going to be good for Numero with Rain going to the side, but actually it's a bit unfortunate because Resnick is not in range to heal. The limit break going to come out from the Renan. Dealing some damage. Is Resnick, does she have any offensive spells turned on? It looks like maybe not as she does not go for damage here. Soul Prominence does a decent chunk. This Rain is honestly kind of popping off a little bit here. He's taken a number of hits. He's dealt some damage, but the full life is back onto Winter Ravis. And looking at the turn order, she is going to get to go again before Rain. Actually, nobody's going to get to take a turn as Renan is going to crush both of these units. And that is a very convincing win here for Turnbar and the Fire Ferrets. Honestly, it looked like Numero might have a chance there with Rain just crushing Ravis in one hit. I think if Resnick could have just gotten in range to deal some heals or something like that, maybe there's a chance, but Renan, I think, was the key factor in this fight. That double single target attack just absolutely crushes that team, and it was very well done by Turnbar. Next up, we've got some get Swifty blood on our hands. We've got Surf Taco versus Sandrist or Britney Spears versus Unicorn Gunfight 2. And it looks like the Elia, the Alabaster comp coming out from Britney Spears alongside the Lisette and the Sosha. Obviously, the full maze team coming out from Sandrister. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. See if anybody has any answer for this team. It just popped off four wins in a row here as Resist Magic being used by the Lisette will be useful against these maze teams. And the one thing I will say, this mace team from Sand Rooster is ridiculously tanky, like way more so than you would ever think it is. It also has good healing. It doesn't have the best penetrations in the world. At least Summer Catone does not have that. She's crazy tanky, but her penetrations are not crazy. If you're able to get Spirit Magic Attack Resist up, that could actually help you out. As the Wind Veritas TMR being used by the Ildira, that AP Auto Restore Nullify as well as 10 AP down on the party. Keenblade being used by Sosha is going to help the turn order here. Elia is going to get to go next. She should go for damage here. Stag Impact does basically nothing. Have you ever seen anybody tank up a Stag Impact as well as that? I certainly have not. That was incredible. As Broken Sword Shattered Staves comes out from Summer Catone, drops the AoE resistance. That also was tanked up insanely well though, as it looks like both teams procking or er, Preparing for this fight quite well in terms of what the other team may bring. Ildira's not going to do anything. Elia, does she get any more damage done this time? Paralyzing Strike does basically nothing. This is incredible. I don't know if Sandrister's just stacking crazy strike resistance, or if this literally is just a combination of all the buffs. It's not just AoE resistance because Summer Catone took basically nothing from Elia. I think this is crazy strike resistance. That's my guess as another Broken Sword Shatter staves. And both of these teams are taking this damage better than I could ever imagine. Dragon's Might is going to come up from the Socha, so apparently not enough AP to land damage there, interestingly enough. Holy Knight's Triad does do a bit more to this Alaya. Nobody's low enough for Ildira to go for any sort of heal, though. And the thing is, Bolchev doing 627. This is incredible. I don't know what is in the sauce over here for Unicorn Gunfight 2. Wicked Pummel actually finally does some damage. That actually did way more than I would have expected. I don't know. Maybe it's like, I, I don't know. I don't know what's cooking. I don't know what Sanders just got cooking, but I want some of it as <laughs> Socha's going to hop up into the sky. Knight's Blessing coming out from Mastery means this is a fully healed Summer Cadell. This fight, unfortunately, I think is over. I don't know how Surf Taco ever gets through this team unless Socha can do a lot right here. Jump is not going to do a lot. 1100 damage. Alaya. The Alabaster, just standard attacks, and there's still one more hit of the barrier on for Catone. Wicked Pummel, and Lisette is literally doing the most damage on, on Surf Tackle's team. I'm not entirely sure how that's the case, but that is what hap is happening. Summer Catone, gonna go for the Limit Break, put Socha to sleep to make things even worse. Hate down on the Alaya isn't really going to matter as she is going to die shortly here, I think. Radiant Twin Strike, so another beautiful Limit Break, 2600 damage. On the first hit, another 4k, and this Mosh Rage is kind of popping off. 
I've said it before. I don't know what this mace team is, but good lord, is it good. It is crazy. Dragon Flurry. Three hit chaining attack. Does just over 3,000 damage. A level four water gut. Does not quite proc the courage of this Aliyah. And I, I honestly have never seen a fight where both teams are tanking damage this well from the other team. Chaotic Voice comes out, so the Dark Siren Esper is really good. It puts in the map effect on one health, one AP. For Elia, she says, screw your map effect from the Esper. I'm going to use my own. And if there's no heals, this actually is kind of close. Hold on a second. Lissette goes for a shifting strike, lands a kill. Could Surf Taco somehow turn this? Has three people alive. Holy Knight Triad comes out from the uh, Mashri, though, landing the kill. And Summer Katone is going to go Fireblade on the Lissette, and not so fast. Sand Rooster is going to take this victory here, as Elia just cannot seem to do any damage in this fight. A standard attack crits for 1,900, but a slap in the face with Mashri's stick is going to win this fight for Sand Rooster and Unicorn Gunfight. I honestly don't know what the hell to say about this fight, you guys. This went to 11 actions remaining. Both teams just tanking damage insanely well. For a moment right at the end, it looked like it was possible for Surf Taco to win this, but you knew if the health bars got low enough that there was going to be healing coming out from Sand Rooster's team. So again, very well done by this Mace Comp. It seems to just be obliterating everybody. We've got some more fights to jump into. Next up, we've got the Rock Boys versus the Sword and Sorcery Mercenaries, Ram 9 versus Coppola. And Ram 9 is using two of the units he used earlier in the video with Halloween Raibu and Gilgamesh, but this time alongside Halloween Fred. And it looks like this is probably another quick and I would imagine coming up from the Gilgamesh. CD style combat coming out from the Squall, so full night team from Coppola with Engelbert, Lilith, and Squall. Delightful demon being used by Halloween Raibu, and that means this is exactly what this is. Does the um, positioning workout where he can find a big old diamond. Engelbert's going to try and move out of the way to save this. He might still be able to hit this giant AoE though. AP Devastator though takes 40 AP. How much AP does Halloween Raibu start with? I actually do not know. He's got 93. Okay, he's got plenty in the tank here. As it looks like, he should be able to line this up. He's going to go for a giant limit break. Creeping Terror. Does it poison anybody? How much damage does it do? Poisons just the Lilith. The poison does not land on two other units, but good damage onto everybody is a very solid start here for Ram 9. Kotetsu Plus is going to chain up. Honestly, not a lot of damage. It only drops the slash tech resist, I think, for Lilith. So it looks like the debuff resistance is there for Engelbert, from what I can tell. Carving Carnival from the Halloween Fred, though. This is a really nice slash chain going. Landing the blind as well. Coppola, how does he turn this fight? He's going to go with Lionheart. Squall, don't see this limit break all the time. Did I see a miss somewhere? I, I might be seeing things. I could have sworn I saw a miss, but I'm probably just seeing things. I'm not entirely sure. Chakra coming out from the Engelbert. So this is the unfortunate part. He might be blind, but he can see his teammates and he can go ahead and heal them up as a paralyzing edge will take out the Gilgamesh. Halloween Raiyu, how can he respond? Can he deal good damage to this lightning unit in Squall or at least take out the Lilith? Spell Breacher does a good chunk, heals him all the way to full. Halloween Fred should be able to chain up with this with 26 AP. Razor's Edge will take out the Lilith. It is now down to a 2v2. And this is a statist Engelbert on Coppola's side. The problem is, the question is, is that a good or a bad thing? As Winding Blade comes out, misses the Halloween Fred. So she has that guaranteed nullification on. She has good evasion. And this blinded Engelbert might be the best thing Coppola could ask for at this moment. As he just keeps healing him and Squall to full. Spell Breacher again dealing good damage though. Can Halloween Fred capitalize? She's only got 12 AP. She's going to go defensive footwork instead. Unit attack resist and evasion. Squall though I don't think can have like one shot anybody here. Blasting zone. 9800. What the hell did I just say? Apparently I spoke it into existence. Prox the courage. But Engelbert should not be able to do damage to this Halloween Fred. And now can these two units finally get through these two with the Squall? But now the problem is... This time, Ryryu is low on AP, which means he's going to go for Courage. Halloween Fred should be able to deal some damage here, but they're not going to be able to chain up together this time as Fatal Pirouette comes down, drops the accuracy on Engelbert, but Squall, can he again go for another kill on Halloween Fred? Blasting Zone, does it land? 9,100 damage. And now it is Halloween Fred versus two. 
and just the way that the AP worked out on those two turns is a bit unlucky for Ram 9 because I think this is probably now Coppola's fight to win. 1500 damage and all of that good new tank stuff here as it looks like it also gives him hate which means Halloween uh, Rai Ryu is not going to be able to take out Squall. He's going to have to go for the tank and just a bit unlucky, I think, there for Ram 9 as Blasting Zone comes through, 4,300 damage, removing the Protect, but a huge shout out to Squall here for how much damage he's putting in against these Earth units. It is honestly very respectable. Retribution Drain does get dodged, so maybe I did see a miss there earlier. Uh, it is definitely possible. It looks like some evasion is built in here. I'm sure running some Earth evasion cards with the Halloween Fred. So it is possible that there was a miss earlier, and I, I didn't actually catch that wrong. Retribution Drain does deal a little bit of damage, but Ryru's out of AP. He's just going to have to standard attack here. And even though he's got Elena's lightsaber in his hand, it is not enough to get it done. Prox the Courage. Engelbert, if he can land, should be able to finish this fight. And he's got an Esper, which means he will be able to land it. 50 or 538 damage will seal the deal. And that is a big old win for Coppola and the Sword and Sorcery Mercenaries. I said it during the fight, you guys. Um, I mean, it was a great fight. I think there was a couple of unlucky things that went, went, ramp, went against Ram 9. Blinding the Engelbert legitimately, I think, was a bad thing for Ram 9. I think it was actually unlucky because that means Engelbert was not attempting to attack. And not only does he not, not only could he then like heal himself with Retribution Drain, instead, because he's blinded, he heals him and his allies. And without those heals, there's no way that Squall is living through all of that damage. Um, and then the AP landed in a really awkward way where one turn Fred was out of AP and Ryru had it. And then the next turn Fred AP had AP and Ryru was out. If they both had it on the same turn, they could have taken out Squall with that Earth Slash Chain and it just didn't work out that way. So sometimes that's the way that she goes. But Coppola, congratulations on the victory. And I think we have one or two more fights for you guys. Two fights left for this week, you guys. We've got Symphony of the Knights, coached by Maverick versus Scarlet Moon Empire, coached by McCrane, and it looks like Double Water plus Cyrell. This is the same team that Maverick actually brought up against Sandrister. Will it work better against McCrane this time, as McCrane is bringing Elda, Leonis, bringing Shells, and also bringing Winter Luartha. So this is uh, basically just a run back of both of the teams we saw earlier in the video going up against each other this time, as Leonis Barrier is here for the Elda Leonis. I've said before, it gives him so many good things as a tank. As long as he is able to get that off, he can do his job very, very successfully. Shells is going to go for the limit break, so this is Courage onto everybody. And the entire team is locked and loaded, ready to go. As Puppet Master is here, Courage online. Also, Hate Down is a massive thing in case Eldiver runs out of hate to try and keep that Shells healthy. Oceanic Protection, this is a tech we've seen multiple times from the Maverick. It's a fantastic TMR. Gives Fire Attack Resistance, Unit Attack Resistance. Good lord, did that Elda just tank that damage well, though. I think he has both Protect and a Barrier, so that is obviously adding to some of that. But man, oh man, is that really strong. Actually, I'm not entirely sure he had Protect. I don't know if that Shells ever got that off. I don't think she did. The fact that he mitigated that damage that well is really impressive. We saw him do it against Titus earlier in the season as well as Javelin Fall comes in. The accuracy is there for McCrane, dealing a good chunk to the Chunak. Disrupting Axel will remove the Protect, fortunately, for Maverick here, though, as Elda Le Leonis is going to act. Void Piercer doesn't take anybody out, but Chunak is a bit low. He needs to get work done right here. In fact, he is going to bypass the Elda. There's apparently no more hate left. I don't know if there was a dispel that I missed or if they just hit him enough times. Cleansing Blade would have chained up, but it misses the Winter Luartha. You gotta be kidding me. I'm sure McCrane is running luck to try and hit the accuracy or hit the accuracy levels against Maverick, but lands the dodge against Celis, which means Winter Luartha is going to take out the Chunak. And that is a bit unlucky for Maverick here, as Shells is gonna go next, should be able to top her off without that. Lula Artha would not have been able to land the kill. I say that. She has courage. She actually would have been just fine, I think, as Curative Prayer comes in for 4,300. It's actually a single target heal. Doesn't even heal the low health. She says, Lula Artha, you're good. Don't even worry about it. I'm just going to heal my guy Elda here. As Celis is going to go next, the hate is here for Elda as he moves on to the side and somehow she didn't go for Winter Lula Artha. I'm actually confused as to why she went to Lula Artha earlier. 
I must have missed something. I apologize, guys. As Javelin Fall comes in, a good chunk of damage. Winter Luartha, this is the uh, most efficient 1 HP of a unit that we've seen in a while. As Pummel comes in, starting a strike chain, but there's not going to be much after that. As Curative Prayer, with the healing power down, only doing 2300 is not a whole lot, but Elda is just sitting so damn healthy right now. And Earth and Glory takes out both units. That is not really the way that I expected this fight to go, you guys, but McCrane shows up strong here in this battle. The dodge um, was definitely something, but I don't think it was the breaker like I thought it was earlier in the fight. Because Winter Luartha still had Courage Online, I'm not sure how much it really mattered. The part that I was confused about is that she, they actually went backline and hit Luartha instead of Elda. I thought that was because there was no more hate. But then Celis didn't try to go kill Luartha when she had 1 HP. She went for Elda instead. So I must have missed something there. But regardless, it was a great fight. Congratulations to McCrane for picking up this win. And that means that we now have a three-way tie for a 5-2 and two record between Sandrooster, McCrane, and Maverick, I believe. Uh, which is very, very interesting to see at the standings at the top of the table. But before we hop into that, you guys, we have one more fight left. And I think you guys will like it. Last but certainly not least, we have the hosts of the Leonis Report facing off against each other. Ready Player Will of Fight Club versus JB79 of the Paranoid Androids. And it looks like those androids are running a 9S, Elda King of the Lions, and Curry was at comp. As it looks like the team are being used again, just like last time, to try and get that extra AP on the team. A very smart option by JB. It looks like Spell of Shielding here for Renoa alongside Perrine and Surges, giving him massive physical health shield can be useful however i will say it can be broken fairly easy by elda and looking at the movement of surge as he only moved two spaces it tells me there is a bow tie he's got at least three hate to start the fight assuming there's no vow of love or anything two of it is now gone because of that attack from the um curry wazette here this looks like shadow dance for perrine sharp spear resolute he's going to start moving forward should be able to catch a haste from renoa as this is a time accelerant aoe resist up is also very nice to try and mitigate damage as the shield deployment is here for 9S. A nice little buff, a little bit of extra defense, a little bit extra spirit. The big thing is 9S gets protect, and if Elda or 9S hits the other enemy, they remove the ability to remove that protect, which can always be very useful. Are you going to start walking forward? She's actually out of buffs at the moment, as Time Accelerant's going to pop off for Renoa, which means everybody on Ready Player Will's team is hasted up. Leaping Assault, dealing some good damage, does not manage to one-shot the Curry, but he should be going for the Surges, as Sharpshoot comes out, so no Frostmaw Barrage again. There's no more hate, though, I don't think, on Surges. Unless there is a Vow of Love sub, the hate is now gone. Renoa's going to start walking forward and start channeling what I think is probably a heal, but that heal I don't think is going to land, as this Limit Break just obliterates whoever it goes for. Neural Hacking should do a lot of damage. 7,600 is a good chunk. If this is a heal, it's going to miss, and she's just going to double recover nothing here as Elda, King of the Lions, is walking in. She'll be able to break the barriers on both units, which is huge. Lion's Drain doesn't do a ton of damage, though, and actually, Will's Renoa gets the reactive heal, which is nice. However, Curry gets the reflex on the Vortex Kick, which is huge, because now Curry does live to attack one more time, unless Renoa takes him out here, which there is a chance. No, the casting time is taking too long. So what does he go for? It's a sharpshoot. 4,500 damage is certainly important here as twin strike will take out the curry but man oh man that extra 4500 damage how much is it going to matter my guess is a decent amount as hacking obliterates this perrine my goodness that was a hell of a lot of damage perrine is down for the count cleansing spear is going to take out the ranella and jb79 guys don't count him out he walked into this week with only one win picks up a double win week here and is now looking pretty decent in the standing. So this was an absolutely excellent fight. Shout out to both of these absolutely amazing people and huge pillars of our community. Um, they're truly, truly awesome people. I've had the pleasure of getting to meet them um, and just very thankful to them for everything that they do with the podcast, all of their guides. Um, you know, I think a lot of people out there, including myself, probably wouldn't still be playing this game if not for a, a lot of the content they put out so make sure to show in the comments your appreciation for these two guys here as they really are awesome and let's go ahead and check out the standings all right guys all the fights over and done with for the first five weeks these are how the champions league standings look heading into week six 
And you'll notice we have a new name up at the top, Sand Rooster of Unicorn Gunfight 2, Electric Boogaloo. Five straight wins, started off the season 0-2 and has been on a tear. Very similar vibes to season two when he started out 0-2 and ended up in the season 7-2. He literally didn't lose another series after the first two weeks. Could he do the same thing this year or this season? I could see it being a possibility. He is on a two-way tie right now with two other teams at 5-2, and two, but he has head-to-head -head tiebreaker wins over both McCrane and Maverick which means he is in first place and in control of his own destiny here. McCrane in second place with Scarlet Moon Empire has looked very, very good all season. And the same with Maverick. Headed into the week undefeated, brought out a different team we've never seen before. He's He hasn't only run the Axe Comp uh, the all season, but he's never run this comp, and it went 0-2 this week, unfortunately. But it was also against two of the other you know best teams in the league up to this point. So tough to say, three teams all at five and two, looking very, very strong for the late playoff push. There's four battles left for these teams. We'll have to see how their season looks at the end of it. But Jesus LBL, coach of the Straw Hats, only had one battle this week, obviously, because I, I said he was on vacation. Um, so we will have th two battles for him next week, whereas everybody else pretty much has only one. Uh, but four and two right now, looking very, very impressive. Picked up the win over Coppola. He's in currently in fourth place. Looking very, very strong. Turnbar of the Fire Ferrets had a split week. One win, one loss. Keeping himself right there, though, for the playoffs. Currently sitting at a 4-3 and three le record. Looking pretty good. Machen X of House Shoe Puff growing strong. 3-3. Three and three. Unfortunately lost this week against JB79, but currently as it stands, and a 3-3 three and three record would make the playoffs if it were to end right now. But obviously he has played one game less, which can be a good or a bad thing. Ready Player Will, Surf Taco, Coppola, and JB79 are all three and four. This was such a huge week, I will say, for JB79, picking up two wins. And I know this is going to look a little weird because he just beat Will, and Will is in seventh and JB79 is in tenth. But we take all of the head-to-head -head tiebreakers together for every team that has the same record. So as it stands right now, it's a little weird because not every team has played everybody here. But Ready Player Will is 2-1 against Surf Taco, Coppola, and JB. JB is 1-2 against those three teams, where Surf Taco and Coppola are 1-1. One one. So that's how it stands right now. 7th, two teams tied for 8th, and JB is 10th. But keep in mind, even though these teams are between 7th and 10th, they're really only like half a game out of the playoffs right now because Machen X is 3-3. Three three. So they have the same amount of wins. Machen X, if he were to lose, they would essentially be tied. So numero 80 at 2-5. and five. Again, not very far out of the playoffs. A game and a half out of it as of right now, 2-5. and five. And Ram 9, 1 and 6, unfortunate. I feel like he was so close on a couple of those this week. Got a little bit of bad luck, I think, but... 1-6 for this player is just crazy to me. He is so damn good at this game. One thing I will say, I think his draft, and more specifically the teams he's bringing, is stuff he just really wants to play, and I respect the hell out of him for that. And uh, can he go on a run, a late season run? He's not eliminated from playoffs, even though he's 1-6. There are some weird tiebreaker scenarios where a 5-6 and six team could potentially make it. I'd be lying if I said that I think a 5 and 6 team will make it, but this team is so com this league is so competitive that everybody just takes games off of each other. It is entirely possible that that could play out. So, these standings are really really tight with th sorry, four games left for most of these teams, five for two of them. And uh, it should be entertaining to see what happens down the stretch, you guys. So, thank you guys so for so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next week. Have a wonderful day.